This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast here at the Horseshoe Ranch at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. We have a library totaling over 10,000 volumes dealing with every topic from astronomy, atomic physics, and biology to history, poetry, and the arts with predominant emphasis on philosophy, psychology, and the spiritual teachings of the great thinkers of every land and culture through the centuries from the beginning of recorded thought. A great many of these are old books, bound in leather, and with titles and authors stamped in gold lettering. I've always delighted in great books, but it takes time to make the acquaintance of a book. When you buy a new hardbound or paperback, it is stiff and unyielding to the touch. At first, it won't stay open to the pages you're reading. Its covers may close like clamshells unless you hold them apart to read it. Ah, but an old book. One you have read many times. With each reading, it becomes a better and better literary friend. It's binding supple, its pages pliant. The more you study it, the more easily it responds to your hand and yields to the touch. It falls open to favorite pages and passages which you have read over and over again. And the more you read it, the better you understand it and know it. And so it is with spiritual truths. You may at first feel awkward and unfamiliar with them. They may seem like new books with stiff spines and razor-edged pages that turn like starched shirt collars and with bindings that are too tightly stitched. But as you study great spiritual truths, you become increasingly more and more familiar with them. You know them better and better. You come to be at ease with them. You delight in them, as you might delight in great old books. And you come to relish every phrase and turn of metaphor, every old meaning and new nuance which you can comprehend. And your affection for great spiritual truths grows and grows with every passing year. They come to mean so much to you that you have memorized them, you have enshrined them in your mind. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Have faith in God. Trust the Lord with all your might, and lean not to your own understanding. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom such spiritual truths as these. Be not anxious about tomorrow. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Bless those who curse you. Love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Overcome evil with good. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and let all that is within me bless his holy name. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Lay up your treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not corrupt, and thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there shall your heart be also. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added to you. The kingdom of God is within you. God is love. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your mind and all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Rise up every morning singing, This is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Give, and it shall be given to you, good measure, shaken together, pressed down and running over. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? For one is your Father, which is in heaven, and you are all brothers. These transforming spiritual truths can transform your life. 
and will one day transform this very world itself. May you learn and delight in these living truths, and may the joy of God's love live ever in your heart for time and for eternity, beginning right here and right now, this very moment, for the supreme delight of mortal life is the finding and then gradually coming to know the living God. God cares for you. God loves you infinitely. You are a son or daughter of God, and there is a natural affection between parent and child. That is the affection between God and you. And the better you get to know God, the more you will love him. God loves you with a love that will not let you go, with an almost blinding affection for you and for your life and your future. God holds your life in his hands. And the more you come to know that God's plans and purposes for you are good, the better you will trust God thoroughly with your life. God wants only the best for you. And the character of God, the rich and inexhaustible personality of God, are ever greater delights day by day in your life as you increasingly fellowship with God and develop an abiding friendship with God. There's a feeling of completion, of deep contentment, of at last coming to peace with the universe in the finding and knowing of God. You have longed for that all of your life, and you will never be truly content or satisfied without it. It is the supreme joy of existence to grow daily in faithful fellowship with the universal Father, the God who is the origin of all things and who has loved you all of your life and who has both exciting purposes and a deep spiritual serenity for you. You can find these things here and now if you will seek for them. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive, for all things are possible to him who believes. You are loved by God and cared for by God, and all of life becomes new when you live your life for God. You may feel that everything is over for you, but this can become a new beginning right here and right now if you will commit your soul to the love of God and the love of others, thus fulfilling the two great commandments of Christ. And the more deeply you become aware that God loves you, the more natural it will be to love God in return and to have a deeper and deeper affection for other human beings. It becomes an endless circle of love from God to you and all humanity, then from you back to God and all humanity. It is an endless process of spiritual love flowing through the universe, all of it having its origin in the great divine heart of the living God who loves you. And if you would only accept it, can assist you in loving all humanity with an all-encompassing love which is born of the center of the universe and flows through all things. It can be yours if you will only accept it in faith this very moment. There is a transcendent joy in the certitude of things divine. The philosopher Goethe wrote that human things must be known in order to be loved, but divine things must be loved in order to be known, so you will find it to be that if you will love God more and more, you will come to know God better and better. You may not fully intellectually comprehend the nature of God, but you can know God, whether you understand God or not, and you can love God, even if your understanding of God is quite minimal. The important thing is to strike up that relationship in living faith. Simply dare to love God. Open your heart to the universe. Give your soul to God in the holy affection of worship and praise. Even though you may not comprehend God, love God. However awkwardly you may express it, give praise and reverent honor to the ultimate creator of all and the ultimate creator of you. God cares for you with the love of a father and a mother. The universal father is the spiritual parent of all personalities. God is the inexhaustible font of all reality, and God's will for you is entirely and without exception good. God desires for your life growth, better character, deeper faith, greater hope, broader love, and authentic happiness. But there can be no authentic happiness in life without a spiritual center for your life. The great satisfaction of existence is the satisfaction of growing in God consciousness. You can know that tremendous joy 
if you will but open up your heart and your soul to that experience. You are a son or daughter of the living God, and the infinite love of God for you can entirely transform your life and the way you live it. There can be a new beginning for you right here, right now, this very instant, if in living faith you will claim these living truths. If you're intrigued by the things I've been discussing on this broadcast, then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. Love to hear from you. Post Office Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man, all of this without cost, charge, or obligation when you write. To Post Office Box 3080. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Post Office Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God, and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.